Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Yeah, taking a little time to watch the video today. And today I'm going to do another continuation of even more jerkbait juice. And I'm going to talk about the evolution of the deep diving jerkbait. And sort of uh, let you guys know about where it came from and how it's uh, wound up today as far as the modern version of it. And applications for it, like when and where you should throw it and how you should fish it. So I think you guys will find it pretty interesting. And also, I just want to remind you guys, if you are interested in going further with your jerkbait fishing, one well, of the best ways to do it is sign up for uh, Johnny and I. We have a, a an advanced jerkbait online seminar January 20th. All you have to do is go to fishthemoment.com. You can sign up for that advanced uh, three-hour course that we're going to have online. Johnny's going to cover a lot of the live scope aspects of it. I'm going to cover everything else with it the most detailed, comprehensive jerkbait uh, seminar ever put on. Uh, limited to 30 people, so uh, fill it up fast. Go to fishthemoment.com if you guys want to sign up for that. So much appreciated. And I'm uh, sorry if I'm a little congested here. I got over, I had a cold two weeks ago, got over it pretty much last week. And then we have three kids, and three small kids in school. They're constantly bringing stuff home. So one of them brought something home. Kim got sick last week. I've re-caught it, so now I've got another cold. So a um, little bit of sniffling and hacking and coughing and all that type of stuff that goes with it. It's just part of having young kids, though. I guess that's the that's the uh, trade-off for the all the good parts that come with it. So anyway, let's get into this, talk a little bit about it. And I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to start out with my sentimental favorite here. I'm going to start out with the, uh, the bait that uh, really got me into bass fishing in a big way. And uh, got me uh, got me loving jerk baits, um, and I'm going to show you the evolution here. The two that I'm going to talk about is the uh, old Rebel Spoonbill Minnow and the Mega Bass uh, 110 Plus Two, a Vision 110 Plus Two. This guy right, this guy's right here, is the old school that gets. This is the Rebel Spoonbill Minnow. Um, this is the bait that uh, you know I've caught tons on just on this one, but this is the bait that was. In my opinion, it started jerkbait fishing here in the Ozarks. This is, we talked about, if you guys saw the video I did a couple of days ago on who I thought the greatest jerkbait angler was, Jess Poindexter. This is the bait he used. This Guys, I've caught more giant bass on this bait here than any other jerkbait back when jerkbait fishing got started, before all the big fish got kept and ate and mounted and that type of stuff. You just don't have the big fish in the lake we did back in the 70s and early 80s. And back then... Um, if I went to Table Rock Lake in March, February or March, if, if I didn't catch a seven to nine pounder or somebody with me fishing did not, and we were, didn't know what we were doing. I, we were just kids throwing these things around. And if we didn't catch a seven to nine pound bass, um, in April, in March or February, it was an exception to the rule. We almost every single trip caught a seven to nine pounder on the rebel here. Now the rebel, I'm going to show you a, a tr the transition that's occurred uh, between the, the high tech Mega Bass 110 plus one, or excuse me, 110 plus two, and the old Spoonbill Rebel. You can see there's similar similar type of uh, setups here. The big Spoonbill lips on them, pretty much the same profiles on it. But the difference is a lot of different things. <coughs> excuse me, a lot of different things changed in this thing. Was um, first of all. The components in the Rebel were very cheap. I mean, the eye tie on the on the line, on the eye right here. This thing, if you, it, it never ran straight out of the package to begin with. You, it always ran off to the side, so you'd always have to tune it. And when you tune this thing, um, as you can see right here, um, it it it's it's just screwed into the plastic. So what would happen if you tuned it? It would always want to change back to the original position. It wouldn't hold its spot. So it was super hard to get these things to run straight. The, ideally, if you got one that would run straight out of the box, that was gold. And about one out of every uh, 20 that you'd buy would run straight out of the box. That was the biggest uh, aspect of it. And I've changed the split rings here, but they used to come with big giant uh, silver split rings, beak, cheap stainless steel beak hooks, and the things would float up like a cork. So we had to weight them with suspend strips. Early in the, early on, we put lead solder around the hooks before the suspend strips actually came out. Actually, before the suspend strips started, what I did is I took a uh, like a egg sinker, one of those rubber core 
peg sinkers, you know, you use for catfishing. And I'd pour that rubber core out of it. I'd flatten that piece of lead with a hammer. And then I'd uh, put it on the bottom here and super glue it or epoxy it. And then I'd file it down and make it smooth to get the thing where it would suspend completely new, completely neutral. And uh, that was one of the most difficult things about it. And this particular thing, you've got just BB rattles in it. That There was no balancers in it. It was just straight BB rattles on it. And we could, we could tune these pretty good with where you put the lead to make a, a level suspension on them. And guys, even though this was a rudimentary bait for the day, I caught, I caught so many giants on this thing that you just can't believe it. Now, the evolution that took place Excuse me, God, I gotta blow my nose here. The, the evolution that took place on this thing after the Spoonbow Rebel, or excuse me, after the Spoonbow Rebel here, uh, Smithwick Rogue came out with the deep dive inversion. I never did like the Rogue. The Rogue, I could never get the deep diver to run straight. It was a crooked running son of a gun, much more so than the Rebel. The advantage of the Rogue, it came in better colors. The Spoonbow Rebel came in a very limited colors. It came in like a gold side, a silver side. There was a rainbow trout. There was a, a shad pattern later on, but uh, very limited colors. So what happened is the 110 plus two, actually the Mega Bass 110 plus one and the 110 plus two, this is a recent development. You know, Mega Bass had the, the Vision 110 for many years, but the 110 plus one and the 110 plus two have really come about within the last 10 years, last five years on the 110 plus two. And uh, the differences in the two here are night and day. First of all, you know, the lip configurations are fairly similar as far as the size on them. You can see it's a little bit different design. Uh, the, the tighter, the, the narrower lip on the, the 110 plus two gives it a little bit tighter wobble than the, than the uh, Spoonbow Rebel had. Not much, but a little bit tighter. But the big difference you see here is the components, like the eye tie on the thing here is embedded, uh, you know, solidly inside of there. And you don't ever have to tune these things hardly. I mean, 99% of the time they run perfect out of the box. So just that, just the fact you don't have to mess with tuning these things and you keep the integrity of the eye intact is a big improvement. Second is the hardware on them. They come with really good hooks, really good split rings on the thing, um, a dark colored split ring, super strong. Um, paint jobs, you know, Mega Bass has got over 150 colors of paint, so you got a paint scheme to match everything. But the, the, the another big difference between the, the two, the evolution of the uh, Rogue into the uh, Mega Bass, is the internal balancer system on it. This thing has got an internal balancer system on it that makes it extremely aerodynamic when you're casting, and that was one of the biggest drawbacks of the of the re, of the Rebel is this thing casted, it was like casting a potato chip in the wind. It caught the wind, it was terrible. It didn't cut wind at all. Very difficult to throw this thing very far. And that was the big advantage of the 110 plus two is the internal balancer system um, not only made this thing super aerodynamic, so you could, your casts were 30, 40% longer with, the, with the, the Mega Bass, but the balancer system allowed the bait to get down to its maximum depth much quicker than, than the Rebel. So there, there was improvements as far as in the evolution, there was improvements all the way around. Plus on top of that, you know, the, the uh, Mega Bass will, will suspend naturally. Any tweaking that you have to do can be done with a little bit bigger hooks or some suspend strips on it, but um, you don't have to do the big massive uh, operation about the procedure it takes on the lead like it does on the Rebel. Um, so uh, action-wise, a lot of it different too. The Spoonbill Rebel was never designed to work down and jerk it like a jerk bait. It was more of you reel it down and you just pulled it through the water. And, and the bait, since it had a little bit wider wobble, you'd work it down and stop it. And then you just pull it and it would just go like that and you'd stop it. Like that and you'd stop it. Whereas the 110 plus two, you jerk it down and you work it more as a traditional, God, these hooks are sharp, as a traditional jerk bait. You'll work it down and you'll jerk it and it just darts like that side to side. So the action that you have between the two baits is uh, completely different on the two. And there are still times, guys, I, there's times when I still use this Rebel here. I mean, there's, I've, I've 
caught fish on them as recent as just several years ago. Um, I did real good on a tournament at Lake Gunnersville one year on the thing. I did get a tournament at Toledo Bend on it one time. Sam Rayburn, I've caught them on it. So there's a time and place for it. But uh, ever since Megabass came out with the 110 Plus 2, I pretty much went to it exclusively. Now, the time you want to throw this, <coughs> the, the uh, deeper diving ones, is obviously when the fish are deeper. Um, that's the whole point of them is... is these, these baits here, I mean, the, the Rebel's not going to get as deep as the uh, 110 plus 2, but this 110 plus 2, it will get down close. If you throw this thing on 6 to 8 pound test line with a spinning rod, you can get pretty dang close to 14 or 15 feet deep with it. That's like unheard of with a jerk bait. Whereas the Rebel here, even if you have the Rebel weighted, you're talking about, you know, 7 to 9 foot maximum on the thing. Maybe not even that much, um, simply because you can't cast it as far. So that's the main reason that you go to a deep diving jerk bait is to get the bait deeper. A lot of guys use it also. They don't like to go with lighter line on a jerk bait. So you can also upgrade your line size and use, um, you know, like 15, 17 pound test line and still get down to a pretty, pretty good depth with the thing. So there's a time and place for them guys uh you know the rebel 110 plus two i mean there's a time and place for for both of them still in today's fishing and um i've just got a i've got a real fondness for the rebel guys this is the thing my love for bass fishing started for, for jerk bait fishing with this bait here wound up with you know using the mega bass but this is where it all started right here man i've got this is i've got so many fond memories about this bait and my buddies, when we were young, that used to go with me, I can tell you the same stories with that. So if you guys are interested in any of these, I'll include the Baitworks link in the description. You can order them through Baitworks. It's a great way to support the channel here if you like what we're doing. So anyway, guys, hope you all are doing good. Thanks for tuning back into the channel. Please hit that subscribe button, and we'll talk to you all later.